This lesson is titled, The Number E. Believe it or not, E is not just a letter, it's a number. I have a bunch of quotes. Uh, these are taken off the internet a few years ago, so these uh, links may not be right for where they're at, but they were at one time. Along with the Euler number, E, pi is the most important mathematical constant and occurs in physical equations and in physical natural constants with an amazingly precise coincidence again and again. E may have a mathematical ubiqu ubiquity equal to that of pi and so indeed may be a number worthy of study. I'll let you read the rest. The value of E. Use your calculator to find E to the first power. You'll see on the TI 83s and 84s, it's uh, kind of next to the 4. There's a second uh, button there. Second LN will give you E. So just take that E to the 1 and see what you get. You get something uh, not quite that long on your calculator, but you get something that looks like that. 2.718281828459045. Believe it or not, by the time you finish this lesson, you're going to be able to recite all those digits from memory. Because the digits of E have a unique property shared with Andrew Jackson. Most of this is true, some of it's a little bit of a stretch. But how do we do that? Well, two point. Andrew Jackson was elected twice as President of the United States. So if you remember that, you got the first digit too. He was the seventh President of the United States, so 2.7. He was first elected in 1828, so there's your 2.71828. Since he was elected twice, we just repeat that, that first year, 1828. So 2.718281828. And then 459045, he was a general in the War of 1812, and it was rumored that he wore a pair of 45s on his hips at 90 degree angles. So there's 45 plus 45 is 90 to 90 degree angles. So that gives us the number 2.718281828459045. So if you just remember this little uh, sequence story about President Andrew Jackson, you've got the first 16 digits of E, which I bet is probably about, what, 13 more digits than you know of pi. I'll let you read these. And the number one reason why E is better than pi, according to Doug. In these examples, we're going to compute the amount after one year of investing $1,000 at an annual rate of 10% compounded annually, quarterly, monthly, and daily. So if we compound annually, that's once per year, we use the formula A, amount, equals 1000 That's how much money we put in, times 1 plus our rate, 10%, divided by 1, all to the 1 times 1 power. That's annually. If we go quarterly, 4 times per year, the 1,000 is the same. That's the amount we invest. The 1 is the same, plus 10% divided by 4. This is how many compounding periods there are. There's 4, and then 4 to the 1 times 1. Here we go with uh, monthly. Thousand dollars, same ten percent, but we're doing this twelve times a year, so it's twelve one, twelve times one. And finally, daily, three hundred sixty-five days, three hundred sixty-five is a power. This other one is uh, how many years? It's one year, one year, one year, one period, one year, four compounding periods, one year, twelve compounding periods, one year, three hundred sixty-five compounding periods. 
So notice the more times you compound, you make more money. So if we just compound this once, we make 1100 uh, total dollars. So we actually make 100 bucks. If we compound it daily, we make $105.16. So we make a little more the more often we allow that interest to uh, compound. What would happen if we let that increase without bound? In fact, it, it, like if we compounded every second or every fraction of a second? Well, it turns out that we have a formula for that, for compounding interest that's continuous. It uses E. The amount we would have is the principal P times E to the RT. R is the rate, and T is the number of years we allow that to compound. If you remember the shampoo PERT, it helps you remember this formula, P-E-R-T. Just remember RT are our exponents. So we're going to find the amount that results from investing $1,000 at a rate of 10% compounded continuously for a time of one year. So as, soon as, as long as we're compounding continuously, we're using that formula. So here we go. The amount is equal to 1,000 times E to the 0.1, that's our 10%, for one year. Or $1,105.17. Remember, if we did it 365 times, it was only $1,105.16, so we just gained a whole penny by letting that compound continuously instead of just once a day. Here's a U-try. On January 2nd, 2000, it's placed on an IRA that will pay 10% per, per annum per year, compounded continuously. What will the IRA be worth in 2016? Go ahead and try that. Here's what you should do. You got $2,000 uh, times e to the 10%. This is happening for 20 years. We're going from 1996 to 2016. That's a 20 year period. So after that 20 years, our $2,000 is worth over $14,778. So that's a pretty good investment. What it would be worth after 30 or 40 years? Just change this number to a 30 and then to a 40, and you'll see what that same $2,000 would earn over that time period without ever putting any more money in yourself. Just the compounding interest, just working for you, would grow that money. Suppose you invest $1,050 at an annual rate of 5.5% compounded continuously. How much money to the nearest dollar will you have in the account after five years? So we're going continuously. We're still going to use that uh, A equals P E to the RT. If that comes out to the nearest dollar, you should have $1,382. Go ahead and give this one a try. And then press play when you're ready to check. You should have gotten $1,479. You're still using the formula A equals P E to the RT. Suppose you win or are given 10 grand and you invest it at an annual rate of 6% compounded continuously. How much money to the nearest dollar will you have after 50 years? So you got $10,000, you don't spend any of it, you just slam it away somewhere, earn 6% on uh, per year compounded continuously. How much are you going to have after 50 years? For you guys that are still in high school, uh, that'd be a nice little retirement at ch chunk, maybe, or at least a big old vacation when you do retire. A equals P E to the RT, 10,000, E to the 6% times 50 years. There's 200 grand plus from 10,000. It, it really, really grew. It's time. Time does that and compounding does that. Compounding over time. Look at the graph of how that grows. It kind of grows slowly at first, but because, since we're dealing with exponential growth here, it really takes off. So the longer we go out here, the steeper this seems to get, or actually does get. That's our target for this lesson. I'll see you in class.